Hello, Blackbird group. So we are the group that have identified ourselves as uh, we want to know a little bit. We don't want to go too crazy on all the math, but we want to know a little bit more than just the answer. Let me move myself out of the way over here. Uh, so, yeah, let's explore just for a second uh, what's going on in math. Let's take a look at what we're doing in the eighth grade. In the eighth grade, we have these equations. Uh, and we're going to graph these equations. So what I have over here is a dot negative seven, three, and I just want you to notice uh, I have a grid right here. If you go backwards seven and down three, it put a dot automatically. I just have Excel set up so that it will do that. Uh, so if we put in a dot location, uh, it will it will automatically graph it for us. So we can really put anything in there. Like if we put in the number two and then the number five, hit enter. See, it's going to go over two and up five, and there it is. And then our other equation, now we have a three, seven. So see, Excel put in, it's plotting both of those points. I just have that set up automatically for Excel. Okay, well, here's what we're doing in the eighth grade. We're writing, let me get rid of that one. We're writing equations. So we have Y, I have this equation, Y equals 1X plus 4. And I already have it set up that... Uh, I'm going to let Excel randomly pick a number here, 10, and plug it into that equation. So look what it did. It took the number 10, it plugged it in there. So it said 1 times 10 and then plus 4. That's where that 14, that's where that 14 is coming from uh, right there. The I let the computer pick the 10 and then it plugged it into the equation I made up and gave us the 14 and then plotted it over here. So really what I want it to do is I want the computer to pick another one and another one and another one and another one so we can kind of get a whole bunch of them. Okay, well, Excel does that really well. What Excel allows us to do is grab both of those and fill it down. See what I have? I have a little equation right there. It's picking a random number between negative 10 and 10. And then here it's doing this formula. That's Excel code, Excel code for this little formula. So I'm just going to copy them drag this little button like that and see it'll do a whole bunch of them all at once excel does a it's like a really super fast calculator so now we got about 10 dots and notice it plotted them all um we can pick any random one like the 9 13 okay that means over 9 up 13 it's that dot right there and if we pick maybe negative 7 negative 3 that means come left 7 and down uh left 7 and down 3 it's that dot right there but what we want to, what hopefully the students in the eighth grade have discovered is that these are called linear formulas. This kind of formula right there is called a linear formula because, as you can hopefully see, those dots make a pattern. They make a pattern that all are in a straight line. So they're called linear formula. So this kind of formula always makes a line. And it doesn't matter if we change... Uh, the equation, I'm going to change that to maybe, maybe it's a two and we change this. See how that changed it a little bit. See, it's a different line. I'll take my original line out of there. See, those are a different line, but they're still a line. If I make this a negative five, see the answers to this equation are over here. Uh, we, we picked a negative one. So see what the computer actually did. Is it I'll just take the three. It shows a three and plugged it plugged it in right there. So three times negative five is negative 15 plus the four. That's where it got the negative 11. So over three down 11 is that dot right there. And it did that a whole bunch of times. It did it however many dots I've got there, 10 or 15 times. But notice these are also in a line because that's what linear equations do. Their answers are always different based off of the equation. If I make that back to like a, a nine, the answers are always different, but they make a pattern. So this is a family. This is called a linear family. Any kind of an equation that looks like that has a general pattern to them. Now, as that's eighth grade, as kids move up into their learning uh, math career, they get different equations. And the idea is to discover other patterns, other families. So I made a different one here. This one has got a square on it. Well, if you have a square, let me do some fill down. Now we get a little bit different pattern. Obviously that's not a line. Uh, and this is what sophomores learn. That's a parabola. 
So we can we can change all kinds of things in this one. The parabolas will look different, but they will all generally be a parabola. So if I change, I would have to change the formula over here just a little bit, which it's easy to do. Um, let's say let's say I make this one a negative three. It, it changes all of the values, but it doesn't change the general shape. So no matter what kind of values we put in there, we're going to have some kind of a uh, some kind of a parabola. Let me just show you one more quick example and do a little fill down of this one. See, sometimes they're upside down, sometimes they're upside up, sometimes they're skinny, sometimes they're fat. But any type of an equation like this always has this general shape. It's a family of shapes that are parabolas. And that's what happens uh, in Algebra 2-ish, which is basically a sophomore and or junior uh, year. Okay, and then that's what happens throughout their mathematical career. We just get more and more complicated shapes, like what happens if it's an X to the third kind of shape? Well, we can let Excel do it for us really quick. We start getting things that are curvy shaped. Uh, this type of shape is another uh, pattern that happens all of the time in mathematics. Anything to the third power starts to look something like that. So the ho whole idea, by the time kids get to be seniors, there's... There's about 20 different sets of families that they will be exposed to uh, that make general patterns like this. Okay, and of course, it's their task to know them all. Okay, well, once you get past being a senior, there's way more complicated uh, formulas that have other patterns, so I have one here. So this is a complicated formula. Uh, I'll show you what it is so you can see it. It's right here. <laughs> I'm going to use a very complicated formula. If you want to learn more about this complicated formula, you're going to have to go to the Bluebird group and watch the Bluebird video that's a little bit longer. But I'll just tell you, there's a long, complicated formula that I have already programmed into this spot right here, as you can see. And then I already have, there's another one for the Y. It's already programmed in, as you can see. Now, this is going to do the same thing. I'm going to, uh, any dot, see, I've got the dot one, one. I had to give it a starting dot. If we go over one, up one, it's right there. There's a tiny little dot at one, one. And then there's a 0.12 and 1.22. That complicated formula I put in there is given as 0.12 up 1.22. It's right there. So this grid is doing the same thing. Whatever happens over here is going to get plotted over here. So I'm going to take this complicated formula and fill it down. So one way you can fill down is you just highlight them and grab this little button right there and bang, fill down. Now I've got like 20 dots and see there they all are. What all of these dots over here are, are these answers to the complicated formula. So I've got these complicated formulas and it just keeps giving me these values. And now we plotted them over here, but that doesn't really look like anything. That doesn't look like anything great. Well, the reason is we need more. This kind of complicated formula needs a lot more than just 20 values. So one of the things that I'm going to do is get back to a couple values and show you that there's another way to do a fill down. One of the things I can do is come over here to this box. Notice this is spot I4, and I would like it highlighted down to about L, I don't know, 40. I'm going to go I4 colon L40. And what that does is it highlights from I4 to L40. That's gonna give me about 40 answers. Then I'm gonna go up here to edit, fill down. What that's gonna do is put that complicated formula in all of those boxes, get 40 dots and plot them. Okay, there they are. So I've got 40, 40 some dots that are coming from the complicated uh, formula and it's giving me those. Well, this still doesn't look like a picture. And the reason is this kind of complicated formula is called a recursive fractal. And a recursive fractal needs many, many, many iterations. It needs many, many, many uh, rounds. It needs to spin a whole bunch of times. So we need more like 100,000 dots, which is why I have Excel. I want a big, fancy, big computer that can do 100,000 of those formulas all at once instead of uh, just 10 or 12. So I'm going to come over to this box and go I4 colon. And we don't really need 100,000. Let's just go L20,000. That'll generate... 20,000 dots. So I hit enter and that just highlighted all the way down to L20,000. Okay, and now I'm going to do fill down. Now, my computer is new. It's got a pretty fast processor, but it's now going to need to do 20,000 
X formulas and 20,000 Y formulas. And inside each of those formulas, it has to make seven decisions each. So whatever 40,000 times seven is, so it's going to need to make about a half a million decisions before it can come up with all of these. So it might take a minute or two to do this. So let's see how long it takes. So fill down. Okay, here it comes. Come on, fill down, taking some time. Three, four, five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. Okay, look at that. Bang! 40,000 dots put in the very complicated formula. There's the Christmas tree. That's the answer. I got a, a formula, a math formula. As you can see, it's got 40,000 dot, or 20,000 dots going down there. And when it plots them all, we have a Christmas tree. So Merry Christmas. There's my math Christmas card. Mr. Dean out.